Today we're going to be looking at the Grass type in the Gym Leader Challenge format. It's a pretty popular archetype to play in JLC. It's got a very simple, well-rounded archetype at its disposal, so let's get straight into it. What is the Gym Leader Challenge? Well, it's a fun format created by Andrew Mahone. You can often see this at side events of regional and other high-level tournaments. There are a good amount of online tournaments being played on Play Limitless, as well as webcam battles on Discord, and simply it's a fun format, an alternative to the expanded or standard formats that we have in the game right now. You can't earn championship points from the Gym Leader Challenge, it is just for fun. But the gameplay is very different to the standard format and that's because of these four crucial restrictions that we have imposed on ourselves in the Gym Leader Challenge format. The first of which is that you have to pick a type and your entire deck has to be of that one type of Pokemon. That means we are basically cosplaying as a Gym Leader. The second restriction is that we have a maximum of one copy of each card in our deck excluding basic energy. Similar to Commander format in Magic the Gathering, it's been adopted in GLC. It creates some interesting resource manipulation, exploitation, and management throughout the game, and it enables much more flexibility and creativity within deck building, rather than having a full restriction on cards where you just put in the absolute staples, maximum copies, and just run with it like you would in a standard format game. Hopefully this also creates much more unique gameplay experience, which is part of the fun, really. The card pool is massive. We can use cards for released from all the way back in black and white onwards, which means we have over a decade of cards to choose from. And finally, we cannot play a spec or rule box cards in our deck, which means it's all single prizes that don't have a rule box. There's also um, some prism star like stadiums and a spec cards. They are not legal for play. Notably, you can use ancient trait Pokemon as well as amazing rare Pokemon as these do not have a rule box specifically. The final thing to be aware of is that there is an active ban list and you can see on the bottom of the screen the current ban cards. It's a very restricted ban list based on how large the card pool actually is but this has really been the sort of most problematic cards that have been discovered through gameplay or overall just create less fun environments for the formats. So every now and then I do recommend checking the ban list just to make sure you're up to date. This typically doesn't change unless there has been a new set released making potentially new combinations more powerful. So here's a quick cheat sheet of the general staples that you can find in the GLC format. I've tried to compartmentalize these into a few separate categories here to make it easier when you are constructing your own decks. First of all, gusting and switching outs, these are all pretty integral in any deck list, as are the sort of the most premium supporter cards. This combines good draw power with hand disruption, and Versus Seeker being a great way to recover any of these is obviously very powerful. Searching options are integral to any deck in the format just to get your Pokemon into play, and they're actually more premium in this format because, of course, you only play one copy of certain cards, so having immediate search options is going to be really important to get your strategy online. Similarly, recovery is even more premium when we only play single copies of cards if we have uh, a very strong attacker in the deck or a vital piece in terms of your engine recovering this if it's targeted by the opponent is obviously important equally prize cards are more important to have access to because again you can have integral pieces that find their way into the prize cards so having access to these is going to be even more important than you would think in standard we have a handful of pretty useful tools. This is just a very short list, but these are some of the strongest ones that we have available. Some nice consistency boosting item cards and Field Blower, even though it's not a consistency card, is very versatile in that there are some really important tools to get rid of, as well as Stadium Wall, which is rife. There aren't many stadiums on the slide right now, but that's because there are many type-specific stadiums that people will incorporate into their deck list and sometimes could be a big part of their overall strategy. So this is almost always worth including in deck lists. I think it's a very valuable card. We have some good energy searching options, which don't sound like much, but are great deck thinners in general and gives you some nice value. And down here we have Arvin and Guzhalla. I think these combine to be a pretty nice package that is almost universal. Both Arvin and Guzhalla can be great ways to not only fill our bench up, but also get them evolved pretty early in the game as well. So there will be a number of archetypes that actually lean quite heavily into this sort of package, having the likes of Tag Call, Poker Gear in their deck list to really give yourself good odds of hitting one of these supporters early on, because it can be one of the better starts in the game, similar to going for like a Bridget or Ball Guy style play in the opening stages. It's a bit more DIY and there are some pieces that could be prized of course, but it can create some really powerful board states with multiple evolutions ending on your first turn. Onto the grass specific support then, there's actually a couple of really good item cards accessible to grass. An extra guaranteed ball search card for a basic Pokemon is always welcomed and it can also become an energy when required. This is a really nice item to just add into your overall ball search count and revitalize it. It's a fantastic recovery 
recovery option, getting us immediately two grass Pokemon from the discard pile back into our hand. Think of it as like half a Clara where you're getting the Pokemon side of things. This is exceptional, doesn't have to be basic, no other stipulations, so it's a really, really powerful option, which is pretty much always going to make its way into grass, especially if you are using multiple evolving Pokemon. There are a couple supporters which grass can utilize, but honestly, as we'll see in a moment with some of the key engine Pokemon, we really aren't short on energy acceleration, so Gardenia's Vigor isn't all that powerful, and Gardenia for that 80 heal effect on a supporter, it's really not that great. Even though this is grass specific, I think we have better options uh, to heal our Pokemon. Think about Malolana, for example, Hyper Potion, Max Potion, these sorts of things are all in the expanded formats. However, the Special Energy and Stadiums are a little bit more promising. Aromatic Energy can give you some protection against status conditions. Herbal Energy is a potion plus an attachment, which is fine. Once again, the Special Energy, they're kind of okay, and if you are weaving in like Guz Haller and such, this can become a one-of in your deck. But I do think that because, again, we have such great basic energy acceleration, these probably aren't going to be high-priority includes. The Turfield Stadium is a real standout, though. This is pretty much always going to make it into your grass archetypes. It allows us to grab an evolution Pokemon each turn. Because we have a great number of Stage 1 grass types which get other Pokemon out of the deck, this Turfield getting access to a Grovile or a Grottle or something of that elk can really just unlock your entire board, which is exceptional. But also remember, as long as Turfield isn't bounced, you can get additional dips of value with this card. Then Aether Paradise Conservation Area, not quite the star of the show, but can give some extra bulk, especially to your basic grass Pokemon, where they take 30 less damage from your opponent's attacks. Could be a pretty solid option if you are really leaning into having a lot of big basics in your deck. Let's start with some of the key engine Pokemon then, and there actually is a lot of great options for grass. First of all, we have Venusaur, which has a jungle totem ability, turning each basic grass energy into two energy instead. So all of these energy acceleration options that we have, like Rillaboom, Cherim, Sceptile, having Jungle Totem on top of that, making them stack, is just absolutely insane. It means Voltage Beat, pulling these energies out of the deck is going to be phenomenal. Suddenly you can use that hammer and attack from Rillaboom, self-powering it up with just one Voltage Beat, it's ready to rumble, which is insane. Rillaboom has pretty high hit points and a decent damage output, so it's like the mixture of an engine Pokemon and an attacker, which is great. Pulling energy out of the deck is fantastic, it means you don't need to have anything in hand, and you can just always make sure you're ramping your next attacker, so these two in combination with one another is actually really powerful. The Sceptile is a little bit less impressive in terms of the actual acceleration it can achieve with that Nurture and Heal, forcing you to have an energy in hand, but you can get an extra attachment in. You do get a bit of healing, which is nice, but the reason I'm highlighting Sceptile is that Grovile is a really, really good stage one Pokemon. Similar to Grottle, we'll get onto Torterra in a second, it's one of the main linchpins of most grass archetypes. Both these stage ones have that ability where you can search your deck for a grass Pokemon and put it directly into your hand. So as soon as you evolve into one of these stage ones, the rest of your board is going to begin to get developed, which is exceptional. So sometimes you'll see Sceptile make its way into some of these grass decks, even though it's only okay, because we know that Grovile is such a powerful option and a big selling point uh, for grass in general is that we have some of the best tutor in any type, actually, by having the potential to have Grottle, Grovile, and Shinotic all in one deck. Uh, I don't think you necessarily need all all of these in one deck, but it is possible. I think typically Grottle is the highest priority card because, again, Torterra is phenomenal, uh, but also Grovile is a pretty nice priority option to have as your stage one uh, sort of Pokemon tutor options. Cherim, surprisingly, even though it's a fantastic stage one choice, oftentimes because you have such great search for your stage two Pokemon, Cherim can often find itself in the shadows compared to the stage twos of Rillaboom and Venusaur. Partly because these two can also get in the mix from an attacking sense, whereas Cherim is much more vulnerable, but also because they are much more sort of self-sustaining. The Rillaboom pulling energies out of the deck is a little bit easier than Cherim having to find the energies more naturally. However, I will say now that Earthen Vessel has been recently printed, having Letter plus Vessel plus like Retrieval and Superior, and having the potential Cotton Lift Eldegoss all in one deck could allow for a sort of stage one build of Grass as well, which maybe is lower to the ground than these multiple stage two decks as well. So Eldegoss is a pretty good option, sort of unlocks that Cherim. Also Gossifleur is a fantastic basic that you can play in your deck, which can get three Pokemon out with its Call for Family effect. So 
yeah, I think the Cherim is kind of not being utilized as much as it possibly could be. Just look at, like, the counterpart for water, Frostmoth. It can only go to the bench and is seeing a ton of play in the water archetype. It's kind of the linchpin of water, whereas Cherim has the more flexible ability of the two Pokemon, actually, and is seeing less play in this grass archetype just because we have better options sort of circulating around it. Moving on to the sort of bottom part of the slide here, we have Roserade. This is a really good option just for a guaranteed tutor of any card. This could be really nice in the early game for setup. Obviously, we can use the Grottle or Grovile ability to grab Roserade, so it's going to get you any card off of that springboard. But also, this is one of the only Pokemon that we have in Grass, as long as you're not playing the Stage 2 Butterfly that I'll get onto in a moment, that we can use to sort of safeguard ourselves around Iono and N. So keeping a Roselia on your board, knowing that you can tutor out Roserade at any point to get you out of trouble is something that you do want to sort of keep your eye on. Swordsbuck, it's only drawing plus one. Its attack also isn't all that powerful, but I did just want to give it a mention. Vileplume isn't really an engine Pokemon, but you can try and build around this if you want to turn off item cards. I know some people love building around these sort of controlling or frustrating archetypes, and this is kind of the go-to in Grass Vileplume, plus possibly some like Venomoth and stuff like that. There is Executor that can also shut off supporters, so you can have Vileplume shutting off items, Executor shutting off supporters, your damage output will be terrible, uh, but you could be locking out a lot of things from your opponent in part thanks to this Vileplume. The Meganium's a really awesome card as well. If you want to go really Exodia with your deck, the Quick Ripening Herb certainly can be an option for that, where you can go straight from a basic up to a stage two once per turn, which is absolutely phenomenal. Plays into the hands of things like that Revitalizer, which I just mentioned. Clara can be a great option uh, for Meganium as well, but it just means that you are rinse and repeating some really, really powerful stage twos, which Grass actually does have a ton of. So it can take a bit of work to get towards your Meganium, but it really can allow you to do some silly combinations with a number of stage two Pokemon. Pokemon. Beautifly is one of the better Pokemon we can have to give ourselves some onboard draw power, actually. Once you're in a turn, you can draw until you have six cards in your hand. A great Iono slash N proofing mechanism, but also just drawing you additional cards throughout the game isn't a bad thing. And that's one of the only things that I think Grass is really starving for, is having a little bit more onboard draw. You have a ton of search from your Grass dudes, you get into play quite nicely, you have good acceleration, that's all fantastic. But unless you're also committing space to fitting Beautifly in your deck, you can be a little bit vulnerable to these disruptors. Then we have a few of the sort of buffing cards. I think Cricketune's probably the best one here where we're giving a plus 40 hit point buff to all of our grass dudes. Lurantis can give us plus 20 damage output. Levani gives us a 40 reduction of damage you're taking, but is a stage two. And Arbeliever, I think this one's pretty much exclusive for like a Meganium package, but it can be a full heal for one of your Pokemon. Could be huge if it's being done on like Rillaboom or Torterra or something that's tanked to hit. You get to basically hit again with your sort of big boy that's in the active. And again, decent hit points, decent attack on it. So not the worst thing to sort of put into play, knowing that you can accelerate and attack with it if ever you really need to. On to some of these key attacking threats. I've already alluded to this a bunch when talking about Grottle and how strong that ability is. Torterra is, again, just a really overstated Pokemon. 190 hit points is a really high threshold, and that Evo Press doing 50 times the amount of evolution Pokemon you have in play. Seems like it's a lot of work to get that going, but having so many stage ones like Grottle, Roserade, Grovial, these sorts of Pokemon going into your deck, you're naturally going to find one evolution, then that finds another and that finds another and suddenly you're on this chain reaction really where you're growing all of your Pokemon up at the same time so an Evo Press can be doing you know 250 damage pretty comfortably actually uh, in the deck so you really are one of the most threatening stage 2 Pokemon that we have in the game for just two energy as well and if again you have that Venusaur in the back it's just gonna be one energy attachment which is really really crazy. Sceptile has the powerful Storm option uh, where you can do 20 times the amount of energy attached to all of your Pokemon. So again, just a small commitment to the Sceptile itself, but it can really rack up if you have energy scattered around your board. Again, it's not the most impressive Pokemon, but if you are using this because you already have Grovile anyway, this can be a pretty efficient attacking threat that you can sort of build other Pokemon around the Sceptile and have this up front taking some sort of lower hit point knockouts as you go. Certainly could be an option. Ludicolo is a cool one. Again, I'd be considering this if I was playing the Meganium archetype. 160 hit points is pretty nice, and the Spirited Rushdown attack does a 60 multiplier for each prize card you have taken. So as soon as you go towards like three or four prizes, this is hitting huge amounts, and it's going to be a fantastic wall breaker that you have available to you. Ludicolo actually has a top entry Lombre as well. It's not necessarily easy to get this combo off, but if ever you do randomly get a top entry, it's another huge bonus for you as well. Uh, so that could be pretty cool. There are some things you can do to try and make that happen happen, uh, which is a cool option to have, knowing that this is some of the highest damage output in the game as well, as you get towards the mid-game is really, really solid. 
we have a couple of decent spread attacking Pokemon. The Jumpluff actually has the fluffy barrage ability, which means it can attack twice each turn. And it's also a rapid strike Pokemon. So we can stick on the scroll of swirls onto this Jumpluff and actually do a 60 board spread, similar to like a Hitmon top in the fighting type if you are finishing your combo. So Jumpluff can actually really get going quite quickly. The Skip Bloom helps you get there. As soon as you attach to Skip Bloom, you can go and grab a Jumpluff immediately, which is insane. So even though it's a pretty vulnerable stage two Pokemon, it can sort of half tutor itself out, which is great, and has this massive combination where you can do a full board swing with just like one attachment of reversal energy or rapid energy plus right hand, these sorts of combinations. This Jumpluff can be doing a huge amount with the Scroll of Swirls and also can use some of the technical machines as well, the Devolution and the Blind Side. These can be big combinations with Jumpluff where, again, you just swing one of those multi-energies onto you if you're behind on prize cards and you can do two 100 damage snipes, which is, again, a really, really powerful option. One of the stronger attackers that Grass does have available to it. And if you are going to lean into a spread approach, you could also look at this Decidueye. The tracking shot for two colors does 80 to the active and 80 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon that already has damage counters on them. If you're playing it in a jump bluff deck with other like spread attacking Pokemon, you can easily fulfill that cost. And you are again, a fairly efficient way to get 160 damage into play, which can be really nice. Again, if you're gonna mop things up with jump bluff or if you've already targeted other Pokemon, this could be a huge issue for the opponent. Couple interesting stage one Pokemon down here. Alone and Executor, really overstated for a stage one Pokemon. The Tropical Shake does 20 plus 20 more for each type of basic energy in your discard pile. So it's a bit of a build around, bit of a gimmicky fun one here. But we do have multiple ways that you can discard energy and tutor them out, of course, with letters, vessels, that sort of stuff into like a big research or something along those lines. This Tropical Shake can be a pretty efficient attacking threat. And then Sunflora is like a 90 hit point stage one version of of Blacephalon's Fireball Circus. The Bright Beam does 10 plus 70 more for each energy you discard up to three. So you can hit 220 with the Bright Beam, which is really, really dangerous actually. And doesn't look like too much, but from a stage one Pokemon, again, you can power this up fairly easily with double colorless, with like right hand attached, this sort of stuff. If you're playing energy retrieval superior, if you're playing Elder Goss, you can actually have a pretty solid option of dealing out big bright beams. And I feel like these actually synergize later. We'll look at a list uh, later on, which I think is pretty cool. There are some other efficient stage ones, the Selgor, Low Kicks, Scovelin and Yammega are some good reversal or counter energy combinations you can have as stage ones. Venom of Aridos mini package that you can have in here as well, just where you can have some 90 damage snipes, which is pretty solid. The Aridos could just be a damage mod in its own right, but also can be sort of lent into with Venoloth and a few other status condition style Pokemon in grass as well. But then we have this huge plethora of basic attackers, which I do think are all kind of worth considering. Zarut has a really good early game attack, where if you've gone second, you can search your deck for three grass Pokemon, which is a huge amount that you can get into play pretty early. And then it's repeated whip attack, quite similar to the Shining Genesect, actually. They're both doing well, 15, 60 damage, but 20 more for each grass energy attached to this Pokemon. So this can be a really good like early game sponge for you whilst you're evolving up Pokemon in the back. But as soon as you do have that acceleration online, they can both become really decent beat sticks actually. Shining Genesex ability can also help maneuver some energy towards it when need be as well. So it can get on the board a little bit faster than some people might expect. Tapu Bulu is a big burst of damage, 160. If you discard all energy from itself, doesn't have to of course, so it can go through smaller stuff if it really needs to, but can be a good chunk. Boswell gets a lot more powerful as the game goes on with its beast boost ability. Wo Chien, one of the cool newer ones actually, where this binding greed attack does 140 for four, not the best rate of damage, but this is actually a great way to two hit KO some really, really bulky Pokemon because the defending Pokemon's attacks cost two more next turn. So that's gonna force the opponent to sort of move in and out of the active or do some shenanigans. Otherwise they're not gonna be able to launch another attack into you. So this can be, again, a bulky Pokemon, decent rate on its damage, especially when we have so much acceleration available or if Jungle Totem's online, this can be a great way to two shot stuff knowing that your opponent has to do weird things if they're gonna try and get around this text. So if you can't get a one shot, the next best thing is make an awkward two shot and this certainly can provide that. Pinsa does 180 if you're behind on prizes, which is fine. Feromos is a free retreat pivot and can also hit 180, but only when you have one prize card remaining. Kartana, if you have four prize cards remaining, can deal 130 for one and is another free retreater. So even though these aren't all that impressive, just gaining natural free retreat 
it can be pretty good in your deck and adding towards your overall like decent basic counts. And then Maractus is flipping some coins. I should also mention that Kartana flips coins. So, so there is some minor synergy here if you want to have some sort of like Glimwood Tangle deck where the Powerful Needles does a 60 multiplier for the amount of energy attached to it. And Kartana can simply put your opponent down to 10 hit points remaining on a coin flip of head. So you can make some weird stuff happen there as a bit of a mini package, really, if you want to have some coin flips. If you can do Kartana plus Aridos, that's obviously a combo to one hit KO things that aren't grass. Let's have a look at some deck lists then. And I think by far the most popular way to play grass is going to be the sort of multiple stage two build that looks to have Torterra as the big selling point, the sort of end game attacker, but all the while you're building towards your energy accelerators of Rillaboom and Venusaur, knowing that Shining Genesect and Zarude can be fantastic options in the sort of early to mid game as you're getting going. One great thing about Grass in general is that we have some really good basics. Cricketot, Gossifler, I've added an extra basic in the deck just because I'll talk about the package in a moment. But even just starting off with like a Bulbasaur, these attacks can all get more Grass Pokemon into play and get you into the game, which I think is absolutely massive. The package I'm playing is the Guzhala plus Arvon combination. So Guzhala can grab you Artisan plus Evo plus Capture or Jet, and Arvon can get you Vip plus Evo. So the whole idea here is that you're going to get a couple of basics established and Evo immediately into certainly Grottle, if that's available, that's by far the best thing you can go for. Then immediately going towards Thwacky or Ivysaur means that on turn two, if you were able to go second uh, and get this Evo play off with either Arvin or Guzhala, you'll notice we have things like Tackle to give us even higher odds of getting that early game play going, is that you can immediately have your stage two acceleration just rocking and rolling with Rillaboom or Venusaur, knowing that Grottle can tutor one of these stage twos out. And then suddenly the pressure of Genesect and Zarude just really starts ramping up, which is exceptional because you really want your opponent to be going through your big basic attackers so that you can make sure you're maintaining your stage ones uh, building towards Krikatoon, having Rose Raid available so that Torterra can really do its thing and strut its stuff by being a huge beat stick. As soon as the Torterra is in play as well, it's such a gigantic threat that they have to go through this Pokemon. If they're going through Torterra, it means again you get to keep your engine Pokemon so you can easily come back with another response of Zarude or Genesect whilst powering up a ton of energy. So I'm really sold by the Guzhala Arvin Evo package. I think TM Evolution is just a really, really strong card, massively powerful in GLC. I think it makes the format a go second format actually just by how much i want to build around this in so many archetypes and that's why you're seeing jet and capture in here it gives us an alternate line where we can guzhala for jet energy actually and go jet call for family with gossifler to get three basics into play uh, so that's also like a backup if you don't have access to tm evolution or if you don't have enough ball search in the opening stages to get your ideal targets you can also go guzhala jet call for fam at least get your basics down and get that established so this gives you a couple methods of actually like getting into the game. Also, just having a colorless attack cost is fine for Torterra, so it's not a huge downside having these available to you. Outside of that, there's nothing too impressive. Heavy Ball is actually a really big card in the deck. It gets Rillaboom, Grottle, Torterra, Ivysaur, Venusaur, so it really gets a huge number of targets for you, especially because these are some of the most important cards within your deck. So it's low-key a pretty good inclusion, I would say. Nothing too surprising outside of that, just trying to get the stuff going. Lux Cape can be big on Torterra, of course, pushing yourself to 290 effective hit points, knowing that you're just churning out huge damage. Uh, you can actually push that hit points even further with Krikatoon as well, so it can be a huge issue for the opponent if we eventually get towards that combo. Onto a slighter variation on this, and that is going to be like a Cherim build, which, as I mentioned, is a little bit lower to the ground. Still a lot of similarities here, to be honest with you, where we still have Torterra as like an end game potential attacking threat. We want to get Cherim and Eldegoss developed. We have the Wo Chen in this list, uh, just to add towards the attacking suite of basics. But you'll also see that I have a 1-1-1 one, one, one line of the Sceptile in here, I already really like Groval. It's another alternate option to the Grottle. So it makes your TM evolution just even more reliable, knowing that you have two things you could try and evolve into. If you are going for your Arvin Vip package, or if you are going for Guzhala Capture Artisan, that sort of combo, um, you have, even if you prize Grottle, you have Groval as the backup. The main reason I actually like Sceptile, the Nurture and Heal version in this list, rather than the uh, powerful storm option is that if your opponent is targeting down Cherim, sure you're probably going to have some basic attacker already lined up to go but also having the nurture and heal as a secondary acceleration option seems like a good idea to me whilst you look towards like finding revitalizer and finding your ways back towards getting Cherim. 
I think that's the main concept around this build. Because we are a little bit more big basics focused, I have made the space for the Avery in here as well. You can see I've got superior energy retrieval as a pretty good way to get Spring Bloom off. Uh, we are sacrificing Venusaur and a few other stage ones. We're not playing the Cricketune in here either. So there are a few concessions we've had to make to play the stage one package. Uh, but this could be much more aggressive and get online a little bit more realistically. And I do think this is a solid alternative. These are the two builds, for certainly the first build that I showed, but also this one. I think these are the more serious builds, but I have also done a couple more creative and fun ones for you to go away and try as well. We're going to start off with Combo Jump Bluff, where we are trying to make use of the Scroll of Swirls. Uh, trying to attack twice with this option. It does a 30 damage spread across the entirety of your opponent's board. So with a reversal energy, you do 60 to everything. Then you look towards a technical machine devolution play. We are still playing TM Evo in this list as well. Once again, we're looking towards that Grottle. Uh, we actually have the Beautifly in this list for some extra draw power throughout the game as well because we are combo centric. We have teammates. We have Raihan to try and make those combos happen as well. Uh, so there's a lot going on in this list, but it does still take a ton of elements from the previous 60. You'll notice silent labs in here to get around Manaphy or other bench protection Pokemon like Mew or whatnot. So I think this is an important one to have in the deck. We have Celebi, which places damage counters early, which can be good for us. Yanma can also do a 10 damage spread across the opponent's board, but both Yanmega and Torterra can be really decent options actually with counter or reversal energy to do huge chunks to get through some of the like big basics after you've gone for a Devo play or before you've gone for a Devo play, honestly. Uh, yeah, Mega does 160 for three, and it can't use that attack next turn, but that's completely fine. And the Torterra, as we know, is one of the better beat sticks. We still have enough Evos in this deck to try and make that combo happen. We have Rescue Carrier as well as Revitalizer in this list. That's because it's so good with Jump Luff. The entire line is 90 hit points or less, so that's a pretty easy choice to have in this deck. And I think this is a really fun one to play around with uh, where you're trying to make this Exodia happen uh, with the Jump Luff Devo play. It can be a huge issue for many archetypes in the format, actually. And then the most sort of outlandish one that I have been looking at recently is going to be Rainbow Rhythms. I was also thinking of calling this Sunny Side Up because it's got the sun and it's got eggs. Yeah, you, you can take your pick of what you want to call this. Uh, but the idea is going to be utilizing these really nice stage one attacking threats. Some Flora being the big sort of blow up option that we have. When you have Elder Goss plus Superior or Energy Retrieval or just the letters themselves, uh, this is getting through all sorts of tanking Pokemon. And the Executor is going to be that option that you can use against some sort of lower to the ground basic attacking decks because you know that your high hit points is going to allow you to sponge hits and be a, an efficient stage one attacking threat. This is one of the lists that doesn't need to play energy acceleration, which is pretty nice with just using Raihan and Mela to try and fulfill the two energy costs of some flora and to an extent to help with Torterra as well. You could also put in a counter energy or a reversal energy if you really wanted to in this list, uh, but I thought it was okay just as we are. Uh, I feel like this is definitely one of the fun ones. I mean, when you're seeing this energy count, of course, it's going to be a bit more funky. It's a bit more work to get this energy in the discard pile, but of course, we do have Battle Compressor. Arvin can help us get there towards it when we need to as well, as well as like Mela and Raihan and whatnot. So I think it looks a little bit janky, a little bit clunky, but it actually works out pretty okay once you get towards, again, Eldegoss really tries to make this happen. We have a decent amount of discarding cards. I think you could put even more discard synergy cards in here if you wanted things like Acrobike or Trekking Shoes, even just things like Zinn is resolve if you wanted more supporter cards you could go down that direction interestingly i was thinking of putting in adaman and crash awake and then having like three water three metal in the deck just to give you some more guaranteed tutor of two cards because honestly when you have letter vessel superior energy retrieval and elder goss you can actually activate those supporters pretty nicely in the deck something i might explore with making this even memia at some point as well <laughs> let me know your thoughts on the last few lists that i've shown Again, take the most notice of the first two, but if you do want to have some fun and build some more outlandish grass stuff, take some people by surprise from what they're expecting, these are definitely some cool ones to look into. Onto the general strengths of Grass then, it has some of the best energy acceleration available. Cherim, the best stage one acceleration option that we have, but also having Jungle Totem and having Voltage Beat from Rillaboom, you really are blessed with Grass. You can get so many attackers online, and that's why there are so many attacking options in the deck actually, just because when you have this much acceleration, everything is available to you at your disposal to really have all sorts of options, which is really cool. Grottle and Grovile, I can't say enough about them. Having guaranteed tutor in a format where everything is a one of and you really struggle and ball search is premium it's so nice to just get one stage one developed and then that gets the remainder of your deck out as long as you're 
are not required to go straight into your stage two to get attacking with your Sceptile or your Torterra. You can get a ton of value from these Pokemon and really get your board established quite nicely and is a big boast compared to other types. And then finally, having this nice mixture of viable basic Pokemon and having some big evolving threats allows us to build this board state quite nicely, similar to the Grottle and Groval point really, is that you can have something you know, tempo-wise, doing things in the active position as just a basic, knowing that you're actually weaving in things in the back and you're building towards a better late game than your opponent, whereas oftentimes other decks are having to use their sort of attacking engine Pokemon all in one go, we have them nicely separated, you know, the Torterra is just the Torterra, he's swinging and you've got your basics, they can swing and you know that if they're getting taken out, your engine Pokemon are safe, or if the engine Pokemon are getting taken out, you still have your attacker that wasn't dealt with on the previous turn, so you're always going to be in good shape and you always have a good follow-up play it feels like in grass thanks to this nice combination of basics and evolving threats for weaknesses however because we have so many other evolving options in the grass archetype whenever you're not fitting in butterfly you can fall prey to these hand disruptors it is going to be frustrating to get marnied and i own it out of the game at times yes you play off the board quite frequently with grass but there can be situations your opponent puts you in where you're looking for that final boss's orders or that Guzma or whatever else you need to get things done. Also, we are quite reliant on multiple stage ones and twos. They're all ability based as well. So you are ability reliant. You need not just one ability on board. You need to have multiple of them working in tandem with one another. So sometimes we can sort of crumble under early game pressure. We're not going to appreciate Hex Maniac or other ability locking Pokemon in the game. And we sometimes can be frustrated by prize cards. The final point, which is no fault of grasses whatsoever. It's just that you don't have any bench protection Pokemon. So that can make some of your matchups a little bit wonkier at times. You can... Struggle against some things that have some of the better snipers in the game, looking at like lightning, water, psychic, these sorts of types that have really good snipe options. Simply because we can't protect ourselves, uh, we can sometimes be in trouble against them. Let me know your thoughts on the grass archetype overall. How much do you like playing this type? Let me know what you think about the deck list and let me know your thoughts on the Evo package. I think the grass archetype is one of the best users of the Evo package actually, because the stage ones are so powerful. As soon as you get those unlocked, then the rest of the deck completely unlocks as well. So I think the release of these TMs have been massive for grass overall. If you want to learn more about the GLC, there's going to be links in the description below. There's the official website, Gym Leader Challenge. There's Cardboard Warriors, which is a really useful website, as well as my Cube Koga document with a visual list of the most playable cards in GLC and a few example deck lists from myself as well. Hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you tomorrow for another one. Cheers.